environment. Uh, all time in India, we have been very close to environment and ecology. And it is equally worshipped as our gods. For your surprise, there are communities, tribal communities in India, who worship tree. They don't have any idol, a god. They worship tree. There are communities in India who worship rivers. And by and large, I have to tell you that Indian, you know, are God-fearing people. They, there is a god which is very important by all Indian community. We worship God. And we call it puja. Every day in the morning after we take a bath, we go to the temple and offer and we do a worship. Very interestingly, I am to tell you in Indian culture, we do not immediately offer pray to the God. Before that pray, what we do, I am speaking in my language and then I will translate. He Prithvi, He Deepakam, He Jalam, He Vayu, He Surya Shastran, So Tujo Rasi Jagatpate, Ankampaya Ma Bhaktaya, Grahe Argyam, Divakaram, Vadip Sanamaskaram, Yam Purvanti Dine Dine, Jarvan Tarsha, Sudhandarayam, Napur Jayam. Before we worship the God, before that, we pray, He Prithvi, the great earth, we say first. The water, the soil, the fire, and the sun. Because they are the true God which we can see, feel, and realize. And then only after we offer our pray to the other gods. This is in Indian culture. Why did it happen? <coughs> it happened because in Indian culture, these five factors. Out of them, only there is a life. The sun is ultimately we worship because it's full of energy. We say, A Shurya Shastran Sotujo Rashi Jagatate. A great sun, we are grateful that you are giving us an energy of all kind in the earth that we have. The great water, which we have without water, we cannot live. So the soil give us the food and the oxygen that we have the part of the air breathing these four five things we cannot live without therefore we pay you offer and be all time with us that is what the Indian pray and uh, they, they, they start why I say so look at I am taking you to OT totally in a different direction now unfortunately unfortunately I don't know the case of this part of the world. But in the rest of the world where I have come from, in the course of our development of the <coughs> human society, we had totally neglected these important natural resources without which the life was not possible. No creature can survive without them. Can any of us sitting here live without a air if we stop 5, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, we will die. Can we live without a water, which is 80% more in our body? Can we live without a food? And do we have any alternative to these resources? Can you drink something other than that? I remember, because that was our training, unfortunately, education, I say always a culprit. When I asked on public school, you know, you know public school? The school children, that can she live without a water? He raised the hand. One of them raised the hand. I was surprised. Who is this guy? Can he live without a water? He said, I will take juice. <laughs> Not water, I'll take a juice. I'll take a milk if there is no water. But this is an education that we are offering to our coming generation youth. What I'm saying, can we live without a food? If we are hungry, we cannot eat a BMW car. We need a food for that. And if we really need breathing, Nothing can replace oxygen. We have to have that. But this human society, in its development course, totally ignored, neglected these important resources. Without them, our life is not at all possible. And this happened 
now in many part of the world and you must be knowing it very well that couple of things are coming which you realize that something is bad happening global warming climate change certain issues are surfacing or coming back because the this is the heat that we have to face what we did to the earth in fact that is the what it is an expression i'm surprised that i do not know but you must be knowing in india and many part of the world there was never water was sold in a bottle i mean i'm very happy coming to this place and honestly i'm telling you you go to any tap you can drink a water here in america and many parts of the europe in india if you go to a tap and drink a water next day you are on the hospital because the quality of water has gone down we want we in a different race of development the human is in a different race of development atomic power energy consumption variety of foods and so 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 but we forgot that the what which without life is not possible are the true capital of any community can you pay to any one of us to survive without them now look at the agriculture which we believe that we are surplus by food across the globe and then it is also pointed out that the way the population is going by 2050 we will be deficit in the food production and so the other resources but ultimately if you look into the development plan of any given country you will find ecosystem ecology environment somewhere down below and what will be the priorities you know many other deals many other kind of a deals it's very very unfortunate it's a very unfortunate and what i was wondering in my country i can give you an example of my country that you know ultimately we have been talking developing the nations i'm talking global nations in industrial front front industries but unfortunately we fail to define an industry more of the human interest and that industry was environment ecology which we unfortunately know totally and that is the green industry the forest which conserve the water make the soil and we ignore largely in that we do ignore that the based on these green industries which includes the agriculture also so that we thought out the global development they would have been the focus but our focus is totally different today in the industrial part and you know as i said the heat we have to face and it has begun because in your country in my country there is a difference in my country you see because it's a tropical country in a tropical country the very fragile ecosystems we have there is a balance between the resources natural resources environment climate and ecology there is a very fragile you slightly touch it destroy it you will have havoc to face that's the eco and larger part of the world has the war and i have to tell you that this global warming and climate change issues are mainly coming because we have unscrupulous plan of our government that's that's a very important issue and unfortunately comfort has become a very important issue for human they want to seek in every step what comfort i'm so sorry to say when i was entering into your campus and the other side of the campus this one guy had to push a button and the door opened he could pull it but there is energy and this is one example and there are several brothers ultimately do you know all kind of energy that we are making any food we we consume any industry whether it is a computer or anything ultimate cost is borne by the ecosystem the earth and if you don't realize it today it is likely to happen tomorrow as i said we never thought in india water will be sold in a bottle because we could not serve the quality water and i have to tell you very interesting in many part of the world after the water has been commercialized you know at least the natural resource should not have been commercialized it should be should have been the access of any common and rich man both but the commercialization of resources is coming into today there are oxygen booth likely to come now because many part of the world you have so many of vehicles emitting so much of carbon 
another gases that we really need as you have been going to the to fill the gasoline in some uh, stations you, after another 50 years you'll have to go to some oxygen room to take some <laughs> this is going to be the fate of the human because it is unplanned unthoughtful and the greed of the human has exhausted the resources see we must realize that true resources of any given country are its natural resources the other economies is pseudo economy tell me tell me over the globe on 2008 there has been slump in the market the crash many things happened economy dwindling that was a pseudo economy or everything which dwindled around is a pseudo economy a true economy is the resource based economy where you have a water you have a forest you survive at least you will survive and you think that you are growing very well with another kind of economy very good car very good house very good bag and then five four things are removed out of your list of consumption no water no soil no air if these are removed from your list of consumption do you think the bmw and the good car and good house will serve you and can help you no the here the human mistake came into here the human while planning any <coughs> any plan on the national plan the ecology and economy should go together we had economic growth but ecological growth the ecological and economy eco ecology and economy should go together and it was more important in case of country like ours asia where we are thickly populated because group of people had have a dependence on a small place we need a forest we need, and and in the country like us which is uh, developing of course but even today you, won't, you you should know that even today we have in my place i have come from himalayas must have heard himalaya place i have come from in most of the places there in himalaya even today 80% people have a dependence on biofuel biomass i mean the forest twigs they have been for the cooking they have been using now look at the grazer on the forest at the one time and that is likely to continue for another 20 50 60 year because the other source of energy the gas and other are likely to deplete and you will have to come back to a system which was age old here the ecology can only realize that you should have an economy which is attached to your resources and ensure that as you are growing industrially you should ecologically also grow at least at the time of crisis you will have a capital with you to support you all time and to the future community too but we have not done that unfortunately and here as i said great were the people great were the people who in india spoke that before doing any offering any pray to the god you should offer the pray to the water soil earth and bio oxygen these are your immediate life sustaining uh, things material that was why we believe that religion unfortunately all of us most of the religion that we have gone into we have seen that there is definitely something they have been have been description the religion also bind you want to abide you by the resources capital water oxen if you can go deep into them you'll find see to the quran it's a bible a indian philosophy it is always all time there because they would they knew it very well without them the life is not possible but today human have largely forgotten it and that's why the heat is coming the global warming and as i said the climate change and it begins from anywhere but it is likely to go everywhere everywhere whether it is in america or it's a europe or it's in asia everywhere it is going we are all going to be victim for the same no how in india i give you some example in a, we are full of rivers also you know it's a monsoon country the monsoon comes every year and here and things are being revived 
being again thought out where the mistake was committed. The people are thinking that what is happening? One rainfall come which is heavily most of the places there is a huge landslip landslide because we have taken roads in the Himalayas and the land was fragile and the water falls heavily it sinks. There are great toll of lives. I mean like um, loss have been recorded. Here why? We took a road but we did not ensure that the either side of the road should have been equally established through the botanical mechanical method. We did not do that. We have wanted a road and we forgot that what is going to happen after the road comes in a forest rich areas and the whole forest system will be will become fragile. And therefore Indian philosophy, Indian thought thinking on ecosystem ecology, which was right from all ages, has always time, all time there, planners and as social worker like us have been seriously trying to ensure that how best we can go to bring back the ecological and uh, the, the ecology, the forest, water, soil and the economy together. That's what approach that we have been trying to work on. Giving an example, in India, if you go to a temple, the temple ensure that there must be a good forest around it and which is a tribute to the God, a forest for the God to live within the forest. Every temple is supposed to have a forest. This was written in our holy books. It was to be, but I do not see many of them. But we are trying to revive them. As I said, we take the river as a mother, but in many places the river has disappeared because of we are dumping, we have made a dumping ground. All garbage, all uh, the, 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 the industrial uh, byproducts are, dump, are dumped into the great river. I don't know, you must have, uh, have you heard Ganges, the great river. It is totally spoiled, totally spoiled. Yamuna, which comes to our capital, another very great river, totally gone. I will definitely invite you to please come on Friday. You are all ecology students, please do come. I am speaking on and I will show you some of the slides where the how we have treated our rivers and ultimately the heat that we are facing today out of that. So I have to tell you that how best we can revive a system. Remember that an ecologist, an ecologist, an environmentalist must have, is, is, is a science which is a combination of many things, anthropology, sociology, uh, and the meteorology, because you have to be everything. Only then you can do justice to the human, you will just do the justice to the environment, climate, water, soil and everything. So your responsibility in any case is more important. It is always very important for all of us to understand because total global dynamics are totally changing. They are totally changing the global dynamics and, dynamics and therefore it is, we have to be very, very responsible. Take the case as I am telling you that in India what we are trying, number one as I said, ecology and economy should go together. Why? What by doing what we mean by in India, as I said, and everywhere in the world I've seen, everybody from the rural communities migrating to the town. Here also, everywhere in the world. Everybody because it is very glamorous world. What you cannot find in rural you can find in New York. You cannot have it in the Dallas, you can better have it in New York. So everybody wants New York and so in the Delhi. They don't they want to go to New Delhi. They don't want to remain in the village. And when the villager leave villages, so what is going to be the fate of forest and the water, river? Because remember, remember when I say eco ecologist, environmentalist has many responsibility, I'm trying to point it out. The ecology are always globally maintained by the rural community. You never see the forest in the New York town. The forests are grown by the countryside people, the farmers, the rural community. And the water only comes from the forest within the forest. It comes from the forest. So they are the true guardian. Rural communities are true guardian of ecological factor, true guardian of uh, the resources. And if they are the true guardian of resources and they are leaving their town, their villages, ultimately what is going to the fate and so was the case in India. Here, because we did not have much uh, the, the employment opportunity in villages and as I said, 
glamorous world. The TV has gone everywhere. They see a good motorcycle actor, actresses, and good, good things in the town. So they don't find themselves, that's not a place for me to leave, uh, live the rest of my life in this uh, sick village. They live. And what is happening, the fate is that both the town and the village, they form are rapidly being spoiled. Overcrowd in urban areas and vacated villages. No resources being conjured. That is the lost overcrowded cities, the whole and whole ecosystem have gone a different way now, moving in a different way. Look into Delhi. In case you come to Delhi, you will go close to the river, close to the capital of the country. You will horrible. It's horrible. And so in the case of many part of the world, I am giving an example in India, but you will find it in many part of the world. We have spoiled that. Now the only answer, stay back with us, is how best we can ensure the ecology and economy. If we want to do it together, we will have to find out the rural community stay back in the villages and get all the properties that we have in urban areas so that they on the basis of resources they are born with can get in strong employment through the resources they are raising. Agriculture, big forest they have been raising, they are conserving water. This, there must be in ecological employment opportunities and as I said, ecology industry must be on a different kind now. If a person is growing a tree, it must be considered as an industry because it produces soil, it produces water, it produces the air. It is, should be considered employment, ecological employment opportunity must be explored. Once a guy, a youth, one, he, he before he think of shifting himself from a village to the urban, he would think, well, if I grow in my land, one hectare, hectare of land, this much of the forest, every year it grows, it gives more oxygen, more water, I should be paid for that. It becomes itself a very important source of livelihood for him. And once the money comes in the village in, by any of such initiative, definitely all services, services will come. Why do we have many things in New York, not in the Dallas? Because there is the money in New York. And once in my village the money will come, all good doctors will come, all good education will come, and every glamorous thing too will join. But the only thing, here I am doing a different employment, ecology and economy together. And by doing so, we are not only will have the rural part of the world, but urban also who has ultimate dependence for their variety of consumption in the from the resources guided, governed by the community. And therefore, as I said, we at uh, India, as an organization, community organization, are trying that how best we can generate knowledge, technology, and see that local resource-based economy grow up so that they also grow more and more resources, natural resources, and their economy attached to it. And then how best the local market, which is currently flooded with the product made in urban areas, our resources transported somewhere, then they are processed, and we become ultimately the consumer. This transportation is a hazardous thing across the globe. Look at, it is the one energy which is un... I mean, we are unfair in this approach. Why should a product shifted from rural first to the urban, process, then it goes back, other makes more money, the poor guy, the one who produces gets not much of money, and whatever money he earns, he buys his own product, which is processed and come back to the village. The market flooded in the rural part of the world are made from the product in urban areas and the resource beyond that. So this kind of approach we started, and then we have been able to, our presence in 10,000 villages across Himalaya, we have been promoting knowledge, technology, and then resource-based ecological employment opportunity. Take an example by learning from our own religion. By learning from our own religion, what we did that uh, just to attract and attach the community sentiment towards the forest. Because I have to tell you, this is one green industry which gives you millions of things. The forest gives you temperature controller, it gives you soil, leaf falls, it makes the soil, it conserves the water and everything is done by that. So in order to attract them, 
we begin with one walk, task. And the task was, we say, there is a rebirth. We started a program we called as an incarnation. Rebirth. And we define them. And I am telling you here. Okay. What we tried that in India and in many a uh, religion, whenever a person uh, dies, he is either cremated or buried. You all know that. We believe that when a person dies and he is buried, decay naturally and he's, it is mixed to the soil. What carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, anything content he has in his body goes to the soil. We plant a tree on that. And saying the one family member, your father has come into this now. All carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen has come into this tree. It is your father now. Otherwise you never know your father is gone where. You can see that your father now serving the community because the tree gives the fruits and birds are eaten and everybody eats. And everybody, your father give oxygen, water and everything. There is an incarnation in our religion, we believe. And this is the tree where mother, father and whomsoever uh, lost in the family is found here. And it caught up. It caught up the idea. Here the ecology religion went up together. It was not ecology and economy, but the religion. Because we in India believe in incarnation. And I have to tell you, friends, if you don't believe me, I am giving an example of that. If anybody of us will die tomorrow, either cremated, buried, and our ass in India, we flow the ass in the river. If it goes into the river, it becomes a soil down, and some plants come, a fish eats it, then fish produces the rest of the fish, fish is eaten by the human, the human produces the children. There is incarnation. You go, your element, body element, whether I am not talking of soul, I am talking of the, your body element, go to the different parts and that we call rebirth incarnation and this we are trying to promote and the attraction only is that yes and the many people have come forward whomsoever is dying now and uh, the department of forest has adopted it immediately found it found it very attractive uh, uh, when for every offer and they begin it and most of the places where the forest department operates here anybody the one who die in the family they are offered a tree, cremated. A tree doesn't only help the family to remember their parents into that tree, but also the whole society. So that's one example where the religion can be tapped. And I'm to tell you, we are not tapping. It was all time there. Just you are reviving it. You are reviving with a new knowledge, technology, how best you can rethink. And that's one example that we have been working as I said earlier in most of the places most of the places I do not know the current generation may be different in India because they are all youth very ambitious want to grab quickly the thing as they fast they can what I am saying you as an ecologist and environmentalist it is one very 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 important subject but your line of thought should not merely be the book. You really need a different set of exposure. And you should really need to think, rethink how best the economy, ecology can come back and economy based on that. Because it won't do that. You see what is going to happen in the future. I'm giving, I think, please do come there after tomorrow, I'll be showing some slides where ultimately what is going to be, what are we going to fit it to? The scarcity of water. I have come from Himalayas and we have three major, three, four major rivers. But we have 16,000 villages in one of the state. Out of 16,000 villages, 8,800 villages are water scarce. Because we have a source of water is springs. You know springs? At any given mountain, there are water springs, they come out and because the forest that covers the mountain, it conserves the water, rain water, then it goes to the soil inside. Because the for there had been a deforestation. So the water which fell on the mountain immediately go, go to, the, um, to the river, causing floods somewhere. And at the very time, the spring water is also lost. 
And I tell you, we have 60% spring strider. Now look at what is going to happen. And I'm telling you very interestingly that ecologists and environmentalists are equally concerned what is happening globally today. What do you think, as I said, that if this indiscrimination, indiscriminated approach, the urban-rural economic disparity is going to be very hazardous for the future. Okay, many things which is happening currently in the society, as I said, insurgency, and I am talking of terrorism. What is that? If you internalize it, it is ecological, economical imbalances. There are few people have millions of rupees, others do not even have to have a meal for the evening. And this is all somewhere you will study, I am leaving this on to you. Study how I can how you find connection between the two. Because I believe that a student should not merely be taught. He should be left with the question. To me, when I was a teacher, I had I, I taught twenty two years. At the last of my last of my speech I used to say, Don't ask me question. Ask question by yourself and search the answer. Because that will you'll have an exercise. You read a book write an answer, finish. The mind, the heart, they have to work together to find the solution. Because if you use the mind, you become materialistic. But when you use the heart, both together will make you realistic. And that realism we really need currently, globally. Because the way, because I do not know you are exposed to the other part of the world, but situation cannot be very happy. It's not very happy currently. And therefore, we in India, have begin with another issue, raise one issue, and the issue is that we say GDP, gross domestic product, we disagree. Because it says industrial growth, it says of rich people, we need another growth measure in the country, and that we are calling gross environment product. What state done this year? How much forest has been increased? What drive have been taken to conjure the water, enrich the river? What soil improvement strategy has been done? Tell us in the quantity and give parallel to the GDP whether you have environmental growth. So the ecology and economy should go together. We are raising that issues that there must be a parallel growth measure. And I tell all of you, I tell all of you, please, we, you are born in a GDP era. You know one growth measure GDP and we are all clapped the Prime Minister, to Barack Obama, to my Prime Minister that we are doing well in that front. But what we are losing, nobody knows. Therefore, we globally need another growth base. And as a student, please work on that, whether there is a cross environment product, so that we can see if economic growth is not, and gross environment product is not in a place, or we are losing the resources. No, we don't need it. Because ultimately, I begin what I spoke in the first, you cannot survive without a water. You need a oxygen, you need a food, and GEP way can only ensure whether you will have a good future with the food and water and soil. If we don't do that, the GDP go, 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 and shrack, collapse, and it's a studio economy. One which collapse, why BMW and very good, good, good cars were not, they were not able to sell it in 2008, because there is economical collapse. It's a shoot economy. But the forest will always be, had always been giving the oxygen, conserving the water all the time. It's a true capital. So I think we really need one another growth measure. And all of you, I believe, you have, you are wonderful, the place you are having a education, take this exposure, and should raise the issues, because it is not a question of this man who is coming here, to speak to you something, discuss with you something. It is a question of humanity. It is a question of future people. It is a question of your own survival. It is a question for all of us. All of us. It is everyone's concern that we really need more than that what we are talking about. Materialism is good up to a limit. Please, it is very important. Ecology, economy makes you materialistic. Econ ecology makes you a different. The forest, when you just remember you go to in the forest or along with the river, you find different, feel very happy. It's a nature you are close to. And we are losing very fast nature globally. And tea, it is now the time that 
very thing. And I today believe, I today believe because we are working in many parts of the country, many parts of my place, and sometimes we find that we are alone. We feel that we are alone. We are raising such issues because uh, the, the kind of issues we are raising, it is said to be a nonsense. They are anti-development people. We are said to be anti-development people. No, we are not anti-development that way. We are development for all. It's an inclusive group system, ecology and economy. We do not isolate ecology from economy. We want to, you have isolated eco ecology from economy. But what we are talking, ecology and economy. I believe that we have new friends with me who will think over it and I'm quite sure that you will also be talking about this new group laser. So that ultimately a future, a time to come, a world globally, all countries who are proud of saying our GDP rate very good and other depressed very low, they will also have another group measure saying whether they are depressed or they are very happy. We will find that the countries running faster in development will be depressed in front of the gross, gross environment problem, which is everybody's concern. Thank you very much for listening to me. I think it is 45 minutes. Uh, we have uh, 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. So I leave questions. the people if they have any questions. Questions, anybody? You have 10 minutes. Uh -huh. Dr. Joshi. I know in <coughs> uh, the Tirumala, Tirupati Temple, when you go there to worship, they give you a tree sapling so you can take home the deity to worship with you, but it's also spreading environmental awareness mm -hmm. and helping yes. uh, afforestation in, in India. Are there any other temples? Yes, yes. Allahabad. Allahabad is a place. We have many temples doing that. And I'm telling you, it's coming up as a social movement. We want to make it as a temple that the offering that we, whomsoever go as a pilgrim there, be given a plant which uh, should give him an identity that he has been to that temple and it is the God blessing to him. He should take it home and plant it and will not only help him but to offer also, you can tell uh, tell them about the prasad work that has come. Yes, yes, so, so many things. Right, <laughs> briefly, I'll tell you what was happening. We are in a place which is Himalayas. We grow uh, millets. You know millets? The cores are grains. We do not grow paddy and wheat. The cores are grains. We did not have market for that. So our worry of the local community was that uh, what to do with these millets? We grow, but nobody is there. The only advantage we had that we have very important shrines located up on the hills and millions of rural I mean, the pilgrims come every year there. We went up to shrine people. We said, well, okay, don't you think that this God sitting here at the top of the world in Himalaya will also help his local community or not? The question, the, the chief priest of the shrine said, what do you mean? We said the rich people come to pay offering there and they are all time blessed with the new industry every time they grow. But what this God is doing for the people around it? The poor rural community in the village is around. I said, we have one thing to speak to you about. Will you agree? We said, what? We said, whatever millets, the core the grain we are growing, you ensure that whomsoever pilgrims come here, take the sweet balls made out of these millets, and local community, rural women will make those sweet balls. This become an offering and give it to the pilgrims who are coming there. Agreed. You know what happened? The wonder. The wonder happened. Whomsoever come now in the temple also buy those sweet balls and then ultimately local economy grows up. They are raising more and more land under the Kordar grain so that they can make sweet balls out of it and 3-4 million people come every year and consuming 3-4 million people consuming every, uh, I mean, every season. If local coarser grain does mean nutritional values are very high, they are also benefited at the very time local employment opportunities goes. So it is how ecology and economy have gone together. That's question. Yeah. Um, Dr. Joshi, how do you convince people to abandon their greed? It seems that when the people move to the city uh, or they want the things that they want. 
uh, that's what's hurting the environment. And they have no desire to help the environment because it doesn't suit their greed. So how do you convince them yes, yes, to yes, abandon that's, that's their greed? That's really important, yes. Well, that's, that's a real challenge. It's a real challenge to the youth, rather. What we have been trying that, if you come to our okay. ashram, ashram is a place where we uh, settled. We have a different lifestyle, and what we have been trying, most of the school and the colleges, we have been to and spoken to the principals and other that the children be exposed to our place. When the children have been coming, as I gave you an example, when I told a child, a school going child, what would you take if there is no water inside use? That was a kind of education we have been. But what we have been doing, trying to describe the community that what should be the limit of your consumption. Take an example, very good example I am giving you. Your question is very right. You know what has happened in the last two years in my state, my state has the energy deficit, beginning to grow energy deficit. Then we wanted to make an awareness why we had energy deficit. Because you have number of electrical appliances which were, we were, you could manually do but you want this. So what has happened ultimately, none of your appliances are working, which you have already paid the cost the buying a fridge, buying an AC, buying something like that, you have already paid costs and there is no electricity, how would you do that? That became a realization. Yes, we have invested the money and of, with no use. And also we have tried that, it's not only the case, you in order to have more and more con energy consumption, you need more and more energy production, which is mismatching. You don't have any source of producing energy. So you have to find out a limit because you are not only using consuming today, you are causing a problem for your future generation. If there is only four hours electricity today, tomorrow it is going to be half an hour. What will happen to your children? So what we are trying to use the parent by saying that the true bank is not the money you are keeping in a bank. True bank is a forest. True bank is a water. True bank is a soil which you should ensure for your children. And for that, you should immediately think there should not be, a, there must be a limit of your greed. And I tell you, this is the most important challenge, and that's I repeatedly say. We, as unfortunately, has been a generation who has spoiled everything. But the challenge is on youth, rather, who has to face the future. So for you, this is more important, that how best we can bring and cut our greed. Yes, If you're talking about um, how to get rid of greed and how to build the forests and the rivers and use those as resources. It seems like that plan won't work with the rate of population growth, which I don't see people, so, like even if you try to talk to people about it, they're just totally unable to even, even begin to listen to that, any kind of limit on population growth. So you have to, that has to come from somewhere. So it's going to keep coming from the forest. It's going to keep coming from the rivers in order to support the population. That's just, that's just alchemy. So I don't. No, no, it's not. I have to tell you a correct database. You see, even up to 2050, whatever population rate of the different country is, current rate of growth, population rate, we have the land area available. If we truly manage it properly, we can sustain by. That's the study conducted already. If you look into say every day, if you look at in the America, if you when you be, multiply by ten today, the land area that you have, and so is the case everywhere globally. The management of resources is the most important challenge. The population is secondary because the population rate naturally when the scarcity will grow. The scarcity is not because the resource is not there. Scarcity is because of mismanagement. And if, whenever there is a management, you look into anywhere when we. We came to the class that life were open. We ne never needed that. See, it is called a management. You cut your consumption here, you are storing something somewhere else. So it is in fact, it is the most important challenge in the community, in, in the global age. Of course, the population agree. Absolutely no. There is a population problem also. But equally important is that the management, the ecological, economical management that we really require. We have three more minutes. Two more minutes. Yeah. What do you say about uh, uh, new forms of green energy? Do you think that that's the future? Will we develop it fast enough? Or? Yes, the green energy, if you look into what we are talking about, is energy from the 
as a resource which is which we can recycle. That is the solar is one definitely. I'm telling you very interestingly. We have a system. I'll show you there tomorrow. Every family, you know, the question when whenever we're talking on development issues, we, we eventually have urban and rural scenario that in mind. Urban forget one sometime. Because globally, globally the urban is ten percent. 90% are rural everywhere. If you take a broad database, 90% let us come here. Now 90% are also consumer. Of course, they consume 70% uh, less what the urban counterparts are consuming. The energy today we are producing is more for the urban at the cost of our own resources. I mean the rural resources we talk about. Now, when it, in fact, what we are currently talking is a grid power. We produce electricity through the dams, somewhere we thermal power stations that we have been raising which is a very centralized central production mode kind of thing the green energy has one attribute which seriously we thought out about it that it has to be decentralized what i am talking about is i am on a place where we have an intervention done on the basis that we have solar an application, but unfortunately, solar power, the cell, solar cell are very, very costly. They are not economical today. But at least we can use active solar for the drying, for heating the water, and many, many other applications that we can. We really need to promote that. Second important is that no family in the mountain in the rural, whenever we talk of rural growth, it is animal inclusive. We rear the cow, buffaloes, and whatever we have. A new technology package has come. That is called gas, biogas. We produce from Gobar. It is not the old one. It is only one time you have to put your dung into that uh, container which is hardly this and it cooks the food. Definitely. You know what there is always saying? Inventions are based on the necessities are there. But I believe that, we also have to tell you that the true invention have always came from the crisis. And that is the reason, because we are no more in a crisis intervention, innovations are on, together in different directions. So we, we are energy scarce today in the village and we know the government is not going to help us. We will invent something locally to meet my energy needs. And that is the time has come. And that is what I am talking about, a biogas energy system invented by a community. So at one time, go over report, we learned something from an institute, they came back in the village with that exposure and attached the local wisdom and they produced this system. So this is a local innovation and local innovation always comes from a crisis. Yeah. The problems, the difficulties brings the innovation and the time has come. And as you, as a future, uh, everything of future kind. Yeah, thank you. Really, 